far away in the heavenly abode of the great god Indra, there is a wonderful net which has been hung by some cunning artificer in such a manner that it stretches out infinitely in all directions. In accordance with the extravagant tastes of deities, the artificer has hung a single glittering jewel in each eye of the net. And since the net itself is infinite, the jewels are infinite in number. There hang the jewels, glittering like stars in the first magnitude, a wonderful sight to behold. Were we to select one of these jewels for inspection, we would discover that in its polished surface there are reflected all the other jewels in the net, infinite in number. If we look still more closely, we would see that each of the jewels reflected in this one jewel reflects all the others. This is the metaphor of Indra's net, which is told in some schools of philosophy. Let's keep this metaphor in mind because it will help us understand the Emacs extension that we're about to discuss. So in editing text, there's two main paradigms. One is um, editing at the ground level, where the characters that we type actually appear on the screen. The changes we make actually occur. Um, the other editing paradigm is where we escape to a higher level. And now the characters that we type are not, they don't actually appear on the screen because we're not at the ground level with the text. We are at a higher level looking down at the text um, and regarding the text and referring to this world of text in terms of a language. For instance, we could describe this world as having words and paragraphs and sentences and lines and so on. And we could reason about this text in terms of these uh, textual entities and this textual language. This is the second uh, paradigm of text editing. And when we're in the second paradigm, there is a way to go down to ground level. You hit enter, or we'll hit enter to go down to the ground level. And you can hit escape to go back out to the referential level. Enter to go down to ground level, and escape to go up to the referential level. Now in Vim, the nouns in this world of text all share the same referential plane which we call normal mode. So in normal mode, all of the nouns of the world of text are available, whether it's words or sentences or paragraphs. And uh, they all share the same referential plane and there's, uh, so there's, they sort of compete for space on the keyboard. Um, so an alternative uh, way to structure these modes is instead of having a single mode where all the nouns coexist, um, peacefully or otherwise, you instead have a, des a dedicated mode for every noun. So in that case, what happens is because your modal spaces are now much smaller, you're just talking about words or paragraphs or lines or something, um, the keys that you use can be much more targeted um, and you can use the same keystrokes in uh, in all of your modes and they would have the same ideas behind them but they would have different effects depending on which context you're using. So it's the same keystrokes, different contexts. And the advantage of that is it's often easier to change context than it is to learn new key bindings. So let's see an example of how that works. We could go into character mode and if you look at the mode line at the bottom of the screen there you'll see that we're in character mode. Um, and now when we move up, down, left, and right, we're moving by character. We can also transform the text and the transformations occur in terms of character. Um, you could also go into word mode. And in word mode, the transformations that you do are on words. And you try, you, your movement is also in terms of words. So that's the level of granularity that you have. You could also go to line mode. And when you're in line mode, you go up and down by line, and you can move lines up and down, left and right, and so on. Um, and the transformations that you do are in terms of lines. 
could also go to window mode where um, now the objects that you're referring to are windows and you can move spatially amongst the windows or make do transformations on the windows using the same keystrokes. Um, so let's go to, um, right, and so um, the, one of the things, the, the principles at play here is something called the Rumpelstiltskin principle, which is something that's known in computer science. Uh, which is that if you can name something, then you have that you have power. Then you have power over it. Uh, so this is kind of an adaptation of that principle, which says that if you can name something, if you can talk about it, then it's a noun in your editing language. And if it's a noun, then it has it's a mode. So if we can talk about it, it's a noun. If it's a noun, then it's a mode. And one of the things we've been talking a lot about is modes. So in fact, um, by this principle, modes also should be um, a mode. Uh, you should have a mode that can reason in terms of modes as objects, just like you have modes where you can reason in terms of words or lines as objects. And so let's do that. Let's go to mode mode. When you go to mode mode, you see that uh, the objects that are depicted here are the modes that are that are present in the buffer, which we knew about um, because the style of editing that we had in this buffer was the Vim style of editing, where there's an insert mode at the ground level and a normal mode that you can escape to. Um, you insert, uh, enter the ground level, enter to the insert mode and escape to normal mode. And when you look at the mode mode representation, you see that in fact, that is the structure that's depicted um, but in different situations, you might find um, that you that these modes are not the ones that you want. You want something more tailored for the specific application. For instance, if you're editing Lisp code uh, or, or code in general, but Lisp code is a particular example, um, you might want to take advantage, advantage of the structure of the code. And for Lisp code in particular, we have a mode called Simex mode, which is able to reason about your code in terms of its tree structure. So you can use the same keystrokes. HJKL goes left, right, up, and down. But you also have other keystrokes that are more specialized to the application. Uh, and you can run the code. And uh, we'll see that happen here in a minute. And you can make changes to it really quickly um, and see the effects of those changes. And you're doing this all in a mode that's convenient for this particular application, which is editing Lisp code. And that is, in this case, Simex mode. So typically, when you're editing code like this, you'd want to be in insert mode actually typing out the code. Um, and then you'd want to escape to Simex mode rather than normal mode. Um, and then you could escape again and you'd end up in normal mode. So this, if we go to mode mode, we see is depicted as this tower where insert is at the bottom and normal is at the top, but Simex mode is in between the two. You could also change that if you like. If you don't want Simex mode to be there, you could just move it to the top. And now you find some X's at the top and you enter down to normal. You can see it on the status bar at the bottom there. Enter to insert, escape to normal, escape to Simex. And in fact, you can even add more modes if you don't like the existing ones. Um, and uh, now we have an additional mode here. We have window mode. It goes down to Simex, goes down to normal, enter to insert, escape to normal, escape to Simex, escape to window. Um, so we've talked, okay, so another thing actually to note here is that in editing modes, um, if you look at the mode line at the bottom of the screen, you'll see that we are currently in this buffer, we are currently in line mode. And um, I'm going to hit enter now, and you'll see that when I hit enter, 
nothing is happening. It's still in line mode. If you hit escape, it's still in line mode. And you can find out the reason for that by taking another meta jump out of this. And you'll see that in fact, the reason is that we're currently in line mode and line mode is the only one available in this tower for editing the modes that are in operation in your ground level. And in fact, line mode is all you need here because this is just uh, the nature of how these modes are laid out is um, in, in rows. And so line mode is the most appropriate thing here. But you could change it to something else if you like. Um, and then now we've seen two towers. We've seen the Vim tower and we've seen um, also the Simex tower, the, the Lisp tower. And it turns out that um, because we've been talking about towers now, by the Rumpelstiltskin principle, towers also um, can be talked about, and therefore they also are a mode. So how do we go to tower mode? And the way we go to tower mode is we do we go in a slightly different direction, um, and we find that we are now in tower mode, and we see that there are many towers available. So we're now, we are, we are seeing several possible towers that we have written um, th to be available in, for use in different buffers. And you can edit them on the fly. For instance, let's enter this tower. Um, and now you see that in the bottom of the, in the mode line, you see that we're going across all of these different modes that were in the tower. And you could escape, and you could even move things around. You could put window mode all the way at the bottom right above insert mode. Let's see that happen. And there it is. Window is right above insert, and so on. And the tower always reflects your current position. So if you're in buffer mode here and you go down to line mode, when you go back to mode mode, you see that we are in line mode. Um, but in practice, you wouldn't have a tower this elaborate because uh, you'd rather have several smaller towers that you enter, you, that you alternate between. Um, okay, so one other thing of interest here is that when you're in tower mode, if you look at the status line at the bottom there, we are currently in buffer mode while we are in tower mode. And tower mode actually isn't a mode really, neither is mode mode, they're really referential planes or meta planes. Um, in any case, um, you can see that we're in buffer mode and we can take a meta jump out of this to confirm that buffer mode is the only mode available when we're editing towers. And because that's the one we need, given that our towers are represented in individual buffers. Um, right, so let's... Uh, see where we're at. Trumple Stillskin principle, we talked about mode mode. Um, we talked about the strange loop application of ground level modes in meta levels. Um, and uh, yeah, we saw the different towers. And in fact, you can, uh, we're currently in Vim tower. Um, but you can go to Emacs tower. And now with a single keystroke, you can alternate between Emacs and Vim, which are represented, which are modeled as towers. Um, okay, so, so there's uh, the one thing that we've sort of alluded to is that there are two directions that you can travel in when you're going through this framework. One, level, one direction is, um, and we'll visualize it with uh, like so. so. There's two directions you can travel in. You can either go sideways or you can go up and down. If you go sideways, you're changing your perspective. So normal mode, word mode, line mode, window mode, and so on are all different perspectives on your under, on your ground editing experience. And the other direction you can travel in is up or down, which takes you through meta levels. 
So you go from the ground level editing experience up to mode mode and then up to the tower plane and so on. Or, uh, uh, yeah, and so on. Um, yeah, so this all sounds very complex. Uh, but the truth is, it's not really that complicated. Even though it feels that way, the reason it isn't that complicated is because no matter how many levels up or down you go, and no matter where you are, whether you're in at the ground level editing the actual text, or whether you're at a meta level, some unknown meta level, and you don't know where you are, no matter where you are, the way in which you interact with it is the same at every level. And that is the great power of um, this approach, is that all of the different levels um, are the same. And in fact, the complexity of the whole is exactly identical to the comp complexity of each part. So if you know how to edit words in the ground level buffer and you know how to move lines around using line mode, then you know how to edit any aspect of your editing experience at any level. So, um, so this is a pre-release demo. This doesn't exist on Melpa yet, but you can follow updates um, at this repo on GitHub. And um, if you can also be a beta tester or something like that, if you like, that would be very uh, helpful. And you can learn more about this at uh, dream.org, which, which is where I house the research that I work on. And in particular, um, the research on epistemic levels is what uh, inspired this particular Emacs extension. You can also learn about dialectical inheritance attribution, which is the basis of um, a new economic system that could be fair and could lead to a prosperous and happy world. And um, yeah, if you can follow me on Twitter at Count Bajula. And um, yeah, that's it. Thank you.